So right now in class, we are working on adding and subtracting decimals. So we're going to do a little bit of review here today. So the first thing I'm going to do is do a regular addition problem, pretty simple. 21 and 87 hundredths, 21.87, plus 16.34, 16 and 34 hundredths. First thing I need to do is make sure that those decimal points are lined up. That keeps the whole numbers on the left side, the decimal numbers on the right. Then I'm just going to add up my numbers. 7 and 4 is 11, carried my 1. 8 and 3 is 11 plus 1 is 12. Again, carry the 1. 8 and then 3, I get 38.21. Pretty simple problem. In my next example, 1.2, 1 and 2 tenths, plus 5.63. Now I have a different amount. I have a different number of digits. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a zero in the space on that top number. That way I have the same number of digits on the top and the bottom and I can do my addition. I add up my zero and my three, my six and my two, put my decimal down, one and five is six, I get six and eighty-three hundredths or six point eight three. That zero becomes very important. My next example is a whole number seven plus a decimal zero point eight. Again, I'm going to put a zero but I'm going to add a decimal to that whole number because all whole numbers have a decimal. We just don't generally write it. Again, when I, I'm going to do my simple addition, I get 7.8. It's very important to keep the whole numbers on the left-hand side, the decimals on the right-hand side. I'm going to give myself a little more room on here. We'll do some subtraction problems. So my first subtraction problem, 16.3 and I'm going to subtract 4.05. And you can see again that I need to put a zero, and this is even more important in subtraction, because now I'm able to regroup. I'm going to regroup and do my regular subtraction here, 10 minus 5, 2 minus 0, 16 minus 4 is 12, I get 12.25 or 12 and 25 hundredths. I needed that zero there. Otherwise, students tend to just ignore it and bring down the number without subtracting. So again, another example, 16 whole number minus 10.1. I have to add a, a decimal point after my 16 and a zero. And again, I need to regroup. So I need to go to that six, borrow one. And now I have 10 minus one is nine. Put my decimal, five minus zero, 5, 1 minus 1 is 0, 5.9. If you don't put that 0 up there, students tend to forget about it and just bring the number down. So always make sure your decimals are lined up. That's the first tip. That keeps whole numbers on one side, decimals on the other. It's vitally important. Number two, you want to add zeros to any open spaces to the right of the decimal. You really want to have the same amount of digits in the top number and the bottom number, especially after the decimal. And the last one is if your problem has a whole number, the decimal goes on the right hand side. For example, 7 can equal 7.0, 7.00. You can add 7 point as many zeros as you need in order to make that whole number have the same amount of decimal spaces to the right of the decimal. And that's really the key and hopefully this will help you to add and subtract decimals.